chapter six, section five is Vesper theory and molecular geometry. And you have to be able to draw a Lewis structure in order to accomplish this section. So be sure that you've watched section four and you feel adept to drawing Lewis structures. We're gonna explain the Vesper theory and we're gonna identify electron domain geometry, which is number of domains, and the molecular geometry or the shape of various covalent compounds. So the Vesper theory is an acronym that stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. By definition, it's the valence electrons surrounding an atom, which causes the bonding atoms to be oriented as far apart as possible. So basically, electrons want to be as far away from each other as they possibly can. So if you look in the first example here, this wouldn't be correct because you have a center atom in the middle and the two atoms that are bonded are awfully close to each other. They're actually repelling away from each other and so you actually should have a drawing more like this one where the atoms are as far away from each other as they could possibly be, actually forming a 180 degree angle or a linear shape. So here are a couple more examples. This one again is the linear example where if you had two atoms bonded to the center, then you would have a structure that's completely horizontal, just a straight horizontal line. If I have a center atom that I'll go ahead and call A, and it has three atoms attached to it that I'll go ahead and call X, those atoms would be formed into a shape that has equal degrees between each bond. So each bond should have 120, degree, 120 degrees separating them. Which means that each of those atoms, X, are all equally distanced apart from each other. And so you can see the example they give you with boron trihydride or uh, boron hydride, which is boron with three hydrogens attached around it. So depending on how many atoms you have around the center is going to dictate what shape the molecule takes when all the atoms push away from each other. So you have to be able to count the domains in a molecule. And to count a domain, there are several rules. Each of the following counts as one domain. So each lone pair of electrons on the center atom is one domain. Usually this is denoted by our bubble or alien head. If you have a single bond, that's counted as one domain, and double bonds count as one domain, and triple bonds count as one domain. So I'm going to count the domains in each of the following. We'll start with CO2, which is this one over here. So the Lewis structure for CO2, you have your center atom, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to say that the carbon attached to this oxygen is one domain, and then the carbon attached to the other oxygen is another domain. So I have two domains here, one going this way, one going this way. This one has two domains around the center atom. Okay, let's look at the water molecule, H2O, which is this one right here. Remember, lone pairs on the center atom, they should have bubbles around them. And notice in textbooks, they don't draw the bubbles, which is they're just understood, but we're going to draw them. Each lone pair counts as one domain. So I have one domain here, a second domain here. Each single bond counts as a domain. So there's my third one, and here's my fourth one. So this has four domains total around the center atom. Okay, let's look at BRF5, which is here. This Lewis structure, we have one lone pair on the center, so that's my first domain. I've got a second domain, third domain, fourth domain, fifth domain, and six. This has six domains. And the last one, which is HCN, hydrocyanic acid, that's this one. Around the carbon, we have one domain with the hydrogen, and we have a second domain with the nitrogen. Even though there's a triple bond there, it still only counts as one domain, giving me two domains total. 
Now that we know how to count domains, we can identify the electron domain geometry, which is the total number of domains that surround the center atom. And it represents the electron domain geometry. In other words, there's a name for each set of domains. Two domains is going to be called a, lineature electron, a linear electron domain geometry. Three domains is going to be called a trigonal planar electron domain geometry. Four domains is going to be called tetrahedral. Five domains is going to be called trigonal bipyramidal. Six domains is going to be called octahedral. So now that I know what the names of the domains are, let's go ahead and put those, apply those to our structures. So the water structure, H2O, which is here, remember when we counted it before, it had one, two, three, four domains. So four domains is going to be this. This has an electron domain geometry of tetrahedral. For BRF5, which is this one, recall that it had five domains. I'm sorry, six domains when we counted it. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six domains is known as octahedral. So I would label this as an electron domain geometry equal octahedral. Lastly, we'll do hydrocyanic acid or HCN, which is this one over here. And if you recall, this one has two domains, one and two. Two domains is known as linear. And so this one has an electron domain geometry called linear. The molecular geometry is going to be a second description that we're going to give it. So you're going to tell me two, the electron domain geometry, and then you'll tell me the molecular geometry, which is more specific. It's the shape of the molecule. And it all depends on whether or not we have lone pairs present. So we're going to count the A's, X's, and E's for each of my molecules. A is my center atom, X or B is the surrounding bonding, bonded atoms, and E is going to be my lone pairs. We'll use this chart over here to determine what is the molecular geometry, and that chart is provided for you on the back of your periodic table. So if we look at the water molecule, we have an oxygen in the center, that's going to be A. I have the hydrogen atoms, those are X's, and then I have two lone pairs around the center. Those are going to be E's. And so I will say this has A, X2, E2, and if we look at our chart on the right hand side and we'll locate A, X2, E2, here it is, A, X2, E2 is going to be a bent shape. So we would actually label this with a molecular geometry of bent. BRF5 is going to have A for the center, X, 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 and X for all the fluorines, and we have one lone pair, so that'll be given an E. So this has A, X, 5, E. I'm going to go look on my chart and find A, X, 5, E, and there it is square pyramidal is going to be the name of this shape. So this one has a molecular geometry of square pyramidal. My last one is CO2 and my carbon is going to be labeled A. Both of my oxygens are going to be X. And you'll notice that I have no lone pairs on the center. So this one is just AX2 and that is going to be linear. AX2. So it has a molecular geometry of linear. In our next video, we'll look at several other additional examples of determining the electron domain geometry and the molecular geometry.